Hello, Bingo from TradingFootball.eu and in this video we're going to show you um, how we use a number of different strategies um, both pre-match uh, and in play and we start off with Manchester City uh, against Southampton and we're looking at the correct score market and in addition I also use the both teams to score uh, where I backed no. So the, the idea really was that I, I thought that um, Man City were obviously going to win this game but the score lines in the correct score market I chose um, reflected the fact that Southampton um, could at least get one uh, and maybe even two goals. Um, I added actually a, sort of a half-time full-time uh, market trade <coughs> excuse me, for £10 on Man City the draw and Southampton Man City uh, should uh, Southampton sort of take a, a, an early lead in that particular game. Um, as it happened City scored uh, in, in on three minutes and Southampton uh, equalised after 37 so um, our both teams to score no market was dead so we have to bear in mind now that for the rest of the trade um, we have a, a sort of a £10 deficit already so we're relying basically on the uh, correct score market now and uh, we've backed the higher scores pre-match you know 3-1, 3-2, 4-1, 4-2 we've got a sort of a, a quite a number of the higher score lines covered so we shouldn't really be uh, sort of in too much trouble here the score went to 2-1 and then she scored again to make it 3-1 so a little bit early um, which meant that I was obliged really to um, lay off um, sort of quite a lot of the correct score lines I mean it 4-1 uh, was obviously covered um, but then sort of higher sort of score lines you know f sort of 5-1 you know and more perhaps um, they weren't so it seemed at this point that perhaps I kind of wanted to try and look at exiting the trade uh, as you can see there the, the third City goal was scored on sort of, uh, sort of 49 minutes uh, so I'm looking to lay off um, the 3-1, 3-2, 4-1 and 4-2 that, that's all of the green that I have uh, on the correct score and the correct score home market um, I could, as we saw, just to sort of actually sort of hedge out completely, uh, but I've got this ten pounds of liability deficit already on the BTTS, the BTTS market, so uh, I want to give myself at least a fighting chance of getting some kind of green here. So I'm, I kind of got the choice of either um, exiting both the correct score and the correct score home two market or at least reducing uh, the red on, on either of them so what I decided was to uh, lay the correct score market uh, for half of the green and exit the correct score to home market uh, for a, a completely sort of hedge green of about 22 pounds uh, and hope that you know, City wouldn't score uh, another goal, or Southampton wouldn't make it sort of three-two, kind of early on. So I've left myself some kind of green on the three-one and three-two, uh, and I've reduced the red there, uh, so it went down to about sort of seven pounds. As we can see, uh, I'm trying to get those two lays matched, which will reduce the red of seventeen pound there um, down to six pounds. Of course, the longer it's staying 3-1, you know, that price should uh, should obviously continue to, to come in. Um, I'm a little bit worried about the timing here, so I'm taking the uh, available price of uh, sixes on 3-1 to lay and 12.5 on 3-2. So I want to get these matched uh, you know, as quickly as I possibly can.
Okay, there we are. Both the uh, three one now and the three two are matched. So I'm left with sort of fifty two pound uh, green, forty five uh, on the three two. So uh, we've still got you know a possibility that if it stays three one, we can make quite quite a nice healthy profit here. And um, we've hedged the correct score to home market, so we've got a guaranteed twenty two pounds there. It's it's kind of early days, and I was watching the game, and, and City, you know, definitely looked like, um, you know, there's another goal in them. So um, I decided to clear that remaining uh, seven pound red on the correct score market. So I'm laid three one and three two again. And I've, so by that lay, um, I've managed to get sort of fifteen pounds uh, green on that particular market. Now turning over to uh, sort of another strategy, it's called the OD strategy, where we back the draw and back over three point five. Now this is if the draw is one one at half time. Uh, we're looking for odds of, uh, of both markets to be round about two point six if we can sort of possibly get that. Um, and you know an early goal in the second half uh, you can either let the trade run or uh, you can uh, try and hedge out of the over 3.5 market and our first example of this particular strategy is in the Italian Serie B Carpi against Trapani it's one all at half time so I back the draw at 2.7 for 10 pounds and I backed over 3.5 goals for 12 pounds and I'm asking for, for 2.3 the same strategy uh, I'm applying to a Bundesliga 2 game Kaiserslautern against Bochum again the odds are sort of quite similar the over 3.5 a little bit uh, higher there sort of uh, 4.2 um, now sort of on about the 60th minute it was still 1-1 in the German game and there was a red card to Kaiserslautern which kind of doesn't help uh, matters at all anybody who's familiar with uh, trading on Betfair will know that the red card uh, can offer <coughs> can often um, sort of hinder your chances of sort of making a decent trade it's on to sort of 60 67 minutes now uh, in the Kaiserslautern game and the fact there has been a red card uh, already I decided to lay the draw a little bit earlier at 1.75 I would normally look to get out round about to the 1.50 mark so I've laid the draw for £10 at 1.75 and I'm laying it again at 1.58 I'm looking now basically to hedge uh, out of the match odds market, sort of roughly get about sort of uh, seven pound fifty uh, hedge green uh, on the match odds. Uh, remember, I've, I've still got a um, twelve pound red uh, on the over three point five, so uh, it's it's possible I could be looking at a, a sort of a sort of four pound loss there couple of minutes uh, left in the Kaiserslautern game and I've decided to try and see if I can at least um, cover the £12 red and over 3.5 of £12 uh, by laying the draw again at 1.14 uh, in fact that game uh, so it ended 1-1 one, one, uh, so I lost uh, so around about £4 now um, you can just see on the screen here that um, in our trading football um, live trading area um, we've got to uh, two kind of chat rooms and the chat room you saw there uh, was just um, the sort of in place instructions room uh, which has uh, instructions on what moves to make in play uh, with a sort of a direct link to Betfair sort of quite a quite a useful feature for our members now sporting he on Cordoba in the uh, Spanish League 2 Secunda Division I don't know 
kind of there's A, B, and C. There's a kind of a load of them. I don't quite remember which uh, which one it was. Anyway, this is uh, um, not the Premier League anyway. And uh, Cordoba um, uh, leading to two nil. And um, this particular strategy is called the Gunslinger, whereby we lay the current score in this case nil two, and we also lay the leading team in this case it's Cordoba. So I've laid Cordoba at 1.14, 1.13 I should say, and I've laid the nil two correct score at 2.36. Uh, the idea being that if state correctly, uh, that I've got a £10 possible profit if there's another goal scored, uh, which actually happened. Um, Sporting uh, Hee got a goal in the sort of 85th minute. So we've won £10 on the correct score market. Uh, and it looks like we're kind of going to lose £4.55 uh, on the match odds. Uh, but we sort of still made a profit there for a sort of, uh, sort of £5.40. Another goal from Sporting, of course, would be happy days. Uh, another strategy now, and this is uh, called the Full Monty, where we're looking for a game that's nil-nil at half-time. And we want to back nil nil and lay under 2.5 uh, the idea being that um, should an early goal be scored of course you'll lose the nil nil bet um, but the odds on uh, under 2.5 uh, will, will drift and that means uh, that you can and maybe even sort of exit that trade or let it run uh, hoping for a sort of couple more goals uh, and this particular example in the Serie B in Italy, uh, Regina against uh, Latina. Now the staking uh, here is that, that uh, I've laid the under 2.5 at 1.15, this is at half time remember, for £50, giving myself a liability uh, of £7.50 on the under 2.5. I've backed the nil nil for £9 giving me a green figure there of £21 on nil-nil and £9 liability on the rest. Uh, and I will let this run um, until round about the, sort of the 70th uh, minute mark. So well, let's uh, see how that one uh, sort of pans out. Uh, another strategy which is called uh, laying the dog. Um, whereby um, if the underdog, i.e. that's not the pre-match favourite, uh, is leading 2-0 uh, or 0-2, then we can lay that team, assuming that the favourite uh, are, are likely to get back into the game, uh, which often does. And the great thing about this trade, of course, is that it's quite cheap, because you're, you know, you're laying in the match odds at sort of, um, sort of 1.4 or even lower. And here we have a, a nice example. Spezia against Padova. Um, Spezia with the uh, round about so the 2.3, uh, pre-match favourites, uh, and they were at nil two down uh, in the first half. So we could make you know a fairly well-informed uh, opinion that uh, the favourite Spezia uh, should uh, get back into the game. So we're laying Padova here. The sort of very attractive uh, odds, quite cheap at uh, 1.23, uh, and I've laid them for £25. The idea being that if Spezia uh, do in fact um, get one goal back, then you know, their odds on Padova will drift and we can uh, hedge out or, or at least clear the red. Um, just a, a quick point there, um, add to favourites, you can see there, um, you've got a lot of games on, um, use that particular Betfair function so that the markets that you want are, are very easy uh, uh, to hand and you can include them under your manage uh, your favourites uh, section and as hoped for Spezia the favourite did actually pull one back after 47 minutes very good news for us I've got the choice here uh, either to uh, sort of clear that red completely which was uh, £5.75 or um, I could actually just um, hedge out uh, by backing Padova at 
the uh, increased odds. We should see the market hasn't quite settled yet. I'm not taking the 1.42. Here we go. The market's settling down a bit now. Uh, 1.72. Just a quick tip there. You know, when the market uh, reformed after the goal, um, it was um, 1.48 to back, or you know, let it kind of settle for a minute or two, uh, and the market will adjust itself to the correct prices. So I've taken uh, 1.72. I'm backing this for 17 pounds to give me so around about seven or eight pounds hedge green profit, uh, whatever the result. So that's uh, that game, or well, that particular trade is uh, really over and done with. Uh, I'm moving over to uh, the German Bundesliga 2 uh, for a identical strategy where Karlsruhe are playing away, they're the underdog and they're 2-0 ahead. So exactly the same principle as the previous game, Spetzer against Padova. We're hoping that Munich uh, will get a goal and that will enable us to uh, back Karlsruhe in the match odds market as the price uh, will obviously drift if Munich get a goal. Um, there's a lot of Serie B games on this afternoon. I'm, I'm doing sort of at least three of them, so uh, I've kept that sort of quite handy on my sort of uh, desktop screen uh, for easy access. Uh, this was the OD strategy where it was uh, one one at half time. And the full Monty strategy, uh, Regina against Latina, it's still nil-nil there. And at this point, um, I've decided that I'm going to try and sort of scratch this trade and by laying the nil-nil at 1.78. And you can see there that once I've done that, uh, I'll get sort of around about eight pounds uh, green across all the scores, uh, which covers exactly uh, the liability. Uh, on the over 3.5 market, on the over 2.5 I should say. Back over in Italy, uh, now Carpi, the, the goal, the score rather is 2-1, it was 1-1 at half time, we, we've backed over 3.5 goals. And uh, we've also backed the draw and it's 2-1. Now. 70 minutes gone, let's uh, hope for a, sort of another, at least one more goal there so we can win the over 3.5. Let's see how that one pans out. Um, back over to the Regina Latina game, 70 minutes gone, still nil nil. I've exited that trade basically uh, by hedging for eight pounds green on the correct score market, which will cover the uh, liability of eight pounds on the under 2.5. And good news for us, um, Carpi Traponi, um, Trapani scored to level to all. So we've won £15.60 on the over 3.5 and we've also won £17 on the draw. Now, five minutes to go, and I don't want to leave it like that. I've still got a £10 liability should either Carpi or Trapani um, get another goal in the last few minutes. So um, I'm quickly laying the draw at 1.33. Now how much I'm laying for at 15 pounds here? It, it, well it depends, you can see on the what if figure there I can get to 12 pounds on the draw, 5 pounds on Carpi or Trapani, or I could actually increase the lay, 17 pounds just sort of, just moving up uh, slightly for a goal by either side, give me seven pounds if that should happen, or to be eleven pound thirty should it remain a draw. Waiting for that particular lay to be matched at one point three three. And right there we go. 
so I'll leave it uh, as it is. Now, Regina Latina, 85 minutes. I decided to lay nil-nil at the death at 1.16 for £20, uh, just to give me a, a sort of £3 liability there. Remember that I had a scratch trade at that particular point. Click the button to put the lay in at 1.16. Market suspended. And now, has a goal been scored? Has it not? It looks like it has. And you can see there, I've got a potential £28 profit um, if that bet, in fact, had been matched. There we can see £28.50. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Latina did, in fact, score. So the idea was right. <laughs> but unfortunately, uh, I missed the lay getting matched there by sort of around about five seconds. So that's the that's the fine line between sort of losing three pounds or actually winning twenty eight pound fifty. It happens to all of us, so don't despair. I can see I was actually sort of, sort of so frustrated in a way that uh, I just wanted to uh, skip between the markets just to kind of verify that in fact a goal had been scored. I don't know quite why I was doing that because obviously it's quite clearly. Uh, um, it's marked and confirmed that uh, Latina did score in the 87th minute. So what I'm doing here, clicking buttons, I've got no idea. <laughs> so I'm sort of perhaps I was thinking there was some kind of mirage or whatever. And luckily we did actually, in fact, uh, lay the draw, remember, at 1.33, because in the 91st minute, uh, Carpi scored to make it 3-2. Remember, we had a £10 liability at that particular point uh, before uh, we laid a one, the draw at 1.33. So we made a nice profit there. Um, Spezia, the other 0-2 um, OD strategy, uh, where Spezia were 0-2 down, they actually came back um, to make it 2-2. Uh, we you know, potentially could have won £25, but in fact we had already hedged after the uh, first goal by Spetsch in 48 minutes, uh, we made a, uh, a backing of Padova there at uh, 1.72, so we, we'd already hedged out there for an £8 profit. And we're trying the OD strategy uh, once more over in Germany, the Bundesliga, Bremen against Schalke, backing the draw for £12 and backing over 3.5 for £10. Again, uh, this particular game, it was one all at half time. Remember, we've already had one successful outcome of this particular strategy. Let's see if we can uh, do it again. Using that star button there, we can see just to add this particular game to our favourites for easy access. Um, I was watching this game, and yeah, it, it over three point five goals looked looked doubtful um, so you know I wasn't really wanting to, to come out of this with a 22 pound loss so I decided to um, exit the match odds market by laying the draw at uh, 1.53 uh, and this would give me so around about a five pound 50 hedge green uh, on the match odds market there are five five pounds um, and you know I've got uh, what ten pounds liability on the under three point five, so uh, I'm looking to sort of accept a, a five pound loss there with sort of ten minutes to go. And then one of our worst sort of uh, scenarios, nightmares: the Betfair software crashes. We have open positions in our markets. Our money's on the line. What can we do? Nothing. Just hope that Betfair sorts that out. I'm just sort of trying to confirm that through all the kind of markets anyway. To, 
lasted about sort of four or five minutes. I was able, fortunately, to get back uh, into the game. And with a minute or two left, uh, I laid the draw at 1.1, just to at least try and recover uh, that £10 loss on the over 3.5. wasn't to be. Ended 1-1. So £3.75 uh, on the draw and a £10 loss on the over three point, uh, under 3.5. Um, it was an overall loss of six pound twenty five on that uh, on that particular game and here 's the final roundup quite a number of different strategies, some winners, some losers, but uh, overall um, we came out with a profit uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed that and that uh, you found it useful.